Hey guys, welcome back to Project Commons. Today what we're going to be doing is installing the uh, AFE upgraded wastegate that I got. And usually I would share it with you, you know, the whole teardown and whatnot, but instead I think we're going to do things different. I'm going to get the turbo out, single it out, show you how to get, do the uh, wastegate first, and then I'll show you the reinstall. So let's skip ahead to the turbo. Okay, so we have the turbo out of the truck, and we're just going to kind of go over it and look here and see what all's going on and checking out the gasket, see if it needs replaced. And, you know, things that you should do while it's out. Now, I know that some of you are looking at this and looking at just all that gunk. Let's see if you can get in there, all that gunk build up and whatnot. No, not, not much I can do about that, guys. So, kind of crude, but it is what it is. So, moving on. Here's our wastegate, okay? And there's been some confusion with uh, some people. I'm not going to name names because, you know, whatever. I mean, some people don't, you know, know as much as others, so we'll just explain as to what a wastegate is. Um, once again, I'm not going to name names. I want to be very nice. So, here's what it is. A turbo is a two, two parts. You have a wheel back here that as... Ooh, we going to be able to get a picture of that? God damn it. Okay. See that wheel back in there? As exhaust comes through here, this wheel will turn. And that wheel turning turns this front wheel here, so just like that. And while that front wheel turns, it sucks in air from here. I'm sorry, as it, it sucks in air from here, takes that air, and as it's turning, it compresses it and shoots, ooh, and shoots out here. And then through the inner core and whatnot, what else. So, that's the basic part of the turbo. Now, what the uh, wastegate does, as you can see, it has a little hose here that goes into the housing on the compressor side, and it, it'll have uh, the same pressure of air that's in the housing in this tube, and when it reaches the correct uh, PSI, it'll go into the actuator housing here, and it'll push on a spring and compress it. Um, or, or should I say expand it? I wish I had a diagram. I would, I would show you even better. But anyhow, what it does is when it reaches a proper PSI, it will push on this rod. This rod pushing will then open this actuator here, which I guess would be nice if I could do this correctly. Okay. We'll open this actuator here. Right. Damn it. There we are. See that opening right there? Just like that. What that does is when it reaches a proper PSI, it pushes on this rod, opening there. What that lets it do then is it passes that wheel and excess exhaust comes out here. Now, why do we have this? Okay, here's why we have this. If we didn't have a wastegate, then the exhaust would keep turning the wheel and keep turning it and keep turning it and keep turning it. I mean, it would keep compressing. Keep, I mean, it would just be a never-ending fucking cycle. So, very necessary to have the wastegate. Okay, now that we're all up to speed, and everyone's copacetic on that as far as I can tell, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take off these nuts, and then it seems that I have lost the, uh, the keeper or the ring that goes right here, so we're going to have to make do without or, or, or rig something up there because um, it does not come with a replacement so we have to take off these nuts and save them because there isn't any replacements for those either and then we're going to have to take off this hose right here so we're going to do that real Love quick it. And we'll come right back. so it turns out it's a, uh, it's a 10 millimeter I just want to go ahead and thank New Jersey here real quick for sending me such a rusty damn truck <laughs> Everything I do on this is fucking rusty and gutted like hell. Um, we're actually going to take a moment from this. I just want to show you guys what it looks like in here without the turbo. See all that fucking gunk? Oh my god. So, once again, thank you, 
POS company from New Jersey for giving me such a such a quality truck. But anyhow, guys, uh, this is a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and take off these nuts. Once again, take off this hose right here. And then okay, we'll so we have a quick comparison here of new versus old. As you can see, a lot larger. Um, of course, it's new, so it looks a lot nicer. So, now that we see the visual difference, what we're going to do is get the new hose from the kit and replace it. So, kind of looks like this. Okay, now that we got the tube on the new actuator, put the actuator in place, uh, have a nut hold it down, and you want to get this arm, uh, this arm will lengthen and shorten. You want to get this arm till it just fits. It'll fit, you know, within several rotations, but you want to get just long enough that it'll fit no more. Once you do that, you want to get a marker, and I've already made a mark. You take this off, and you make six full rotations uh, clockwise. And that's six right there. So what we're going to do now that we have six because that will be a preload of 40 psi which is the you know recommended that you do uh, from there we will get this nut and tighten it down put about 30 ish psi on the uh, actuator to open it up because I don't have the actual gauges you use uh, most people don't but you can go get it from Napa AutoZone and so forth and whatnot once I put some pressure to the spring in here, it'll it'll push this rod out, which I can once again reconnect this because as of right now it won't. And then once that is done, uh, like I said, this will be tightened down, and I'll have to get a clip for that, and that will be your preload. That's really how it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down because I can't do this uh, with one hand. Okay. Now that I have that reinstalled, the hose on and tightened down. I'm going to go ahead and start putting everything back together. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is wiggle this back into the Okay, that turbo is not really secured down, so I'm going to try and make this quick. The very first thing I want to do is I want to get this uh, hose right back onto this turbo and tighten it down. Because it's a bitch to get on, uh, the stock one is, with the turbo in place because uh, it's not, not flexible enough. So I'm going to get this on here, and I'm going to get this place. I'm sorry, it is some place and start putting the uh, the nuts back on the threads. Um, I already did, I don't know if you can see it, I replaced the gasket with a brand new one, um, you know, because I'm not going to be taking this turbo off, you know, every day, so might as well do it while it's off. Um, yeah, we'll check in after that. I'll put this on, put some nuts on to hold that. Now that the turbo is back in place and all tightened down there and that hose is tightened up, I had to replace the uh, clamp right here because the old one, was uh, completely rotted out of the threads. Yeah. Actually, I'll show you here. Watch this. I can just pull pull back. So, it's no longer good. See in the threads. See if it'll zoom here. Uh, come on. Come on, you piece of shit camera. Eh, well, it, it's not going to show you. Anyhow, it's screwed. So, off it goes. Anyhow, now that the turbo's back on, we need to get the exhaust elbow back on the back here, which I have laying on the floor right now. And then after that's done, we need to reconnect the oil on the top and on the bottom, the in and out, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, we'll okay, check so it out. The turbo is now back in place, completely clamped down on the elbow, on that boost tube, not holding it, whoop, not holding it in place, oil tube there, oil tube there. Now we need to get the uh, intake or the filter housing back on the okay. front of the turbo. Everything is back in, installed clamp down uh, don't forget to put that back in when you put your air filter back on <clears throat> as some of you may have noticed I haven't given you any torque spec to use and that's because with something as simple as this I just stick to the old German torque spec of uh, 
guten tight. So, you know, make sure things on right. And just don't. I mean, you can use a torque wrench, torque wrench if you want. I just, I don't think that anything was really <clears throat> that critical. Um, I will, after 100 miles, come back and just kind of give everything a tug and make sure everything is still tight. So for the last part, you know, put the wheel back on and uh, take it for a drive, make sure everything's good and whatnot. And yeah. Okay guys, that's it. That's how you install AFE's Blade Runner wastegate. Can't even see it from here. So 